I actually think you would look good with an earring. I don't think I would. I don't know. <laughs> Where? What in the lobe or lobe. would I do like a okay. Lobe, lobe. I don't know. I feel like guys who wear sweaters and things like you wear, I get it in the lobe. Or would I get one of those like up here? That'd be and so cool. And I could cool. do a cuff. Yeah. Listen, I think that'd be cool for a, you. I could do a bell cuff. <gasps> oh, one of those. Oh, God. Ah. That like, I, I'd, I'd buy it. I'd buy a replica of it. And oh, maybe, my I'm God. I'm like, this is the only good thing to come from that movie. And you would know. It's here in my ear. <laughs> you would know that it was the right man for you when he's like, is that? No, it couldn't be. And you're like, why? And he's like, that looks like the but earring that Emma Watson wears in Beauty and the Beast. And that'd be your man. I'd be like, oh, it is. And he's like, ah, oh, that was the only good thing about that movie. And then the wedding banners would all unfurl <laughs> at that moment. Everything would come in. You'd walk in with like a, a Bible. Uh, <laughs> is, it, is that a Chili's? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to part two of our season one finale of Poor Unfortunate Podcast. I'm Connor Perkins. And I'm Caroline A. Metty. So in this past episode that premiered on Monday, we did our first Beluga Savruga bracket. It was a locale showdown where we went through all of these different locations, imagined and real, and came up with our winner. Today, we are doing our Heroes versus Villains showdown. So we're going to be taking all of these amazing heroes and picking the one that we think will best go up against our villain. And then we're going to pick all of our villains and we're going to find the one who we think stands the best chance of knocking our hero down a couple of pegs. Mm. Oh, goodness. So if you haven't filled out your bracket for this episode, do that Right now, it is in the episode description. There's all kinds of instructions for you to follow. Connor made you all beautiful instructions. Like, I felt so comforted (laughs) by those. I was like, oh, I know exactly what to do. And I'm not very tech savvy, so (laughs) don't sweat it. You'll know exactly what to do. So make sure that you fill it out before you listen to the episode and then send it to us so that you could be entered into a chance to win mm-hmm. a special prize. Special so prize. as you're picking your heroes and villains, make sure that you are picking the ones that you think will stand the best chance. Mm. And also know your judges because we will be deciding. <laughs> Unfortunately for all of you. We did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We did Disney news in the last episode, so I honestly think we should just like. I think let's get right it's down go and dirty. Time. Let's it's get go into time, it. It's go time, baby. All right, here All we right, go. Welcome to the the truly the last episode of season one. We hope you enjoy. All right, so here in heroes and villains, we have divided it into four categories again for each of the sixteen original entries. So the first one is royalty, nobility, the gentry. So these are all people of royal or noble descent. Mm -hmm. And then in our second sub bracket of the hero side of things, we have homegrown heroes. So these are people who are non-royal, but heroes all the same. Mm -hmm. On the villain side of things, we have a category of everyday assholes. And then we have a category of... Monsters and magicians. So these are the folks who have some magical, you know, mm-hmm. tendencies that might give them an edge. Yeah. So here we go. Ooh. Let's kick it off. Here we go. Starting with royalty, nobility, and the gentry. Oof. Right out of the gate, we've got Anna versus Rapunzel. Hmm. I think Anna is a little scrappier than Rapunzel is. Rapunzel just hasn't had as much of a chance, if we're talking about her at the beginning of her film... She doesn't know the outside world. It's going to overwhelm her a little bit. Yeah, though she is also pretty good with a weapon. She has a frying pan. She has a lot of things that she can do 
with her hair and she can heal herself. But I guess if we're going Rapunzel end of film, it's just she not have mm. that. I mean, she can cry on herself yeah, right. and maybe heal herself if right. she's down. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Who are you vibing with? I felt like a little bit like Anna could really roll with the punches because she's been through a lot. All right. I'll give it I, I'll give it to Anna. I mean, she's she'll go wherever she needs to go. So yeah, like, I, I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Now we have Moana versus Prince Eric. Ah, uh, two Moana. Two folks of the sea. It's Moana. Two folks of the sea. Girl knows how to chart Prince a, Eric chart almost a course. drowned. And yeah, yeah, he almost drowned. Moana never would have let herself drown. No, 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 no. And she fell off the boat. Don't get me wrong, but she got right mm-hmm. back on. And again. she saved Pua. That is important. Mm-hmm. Oh. Now we have Simba versus Arthur, a.k.a. Wart, of course, from The Sword in the Stone. Two cowards. <laughs> Two kingly cowards. I mean, I guess Arthur isn't, like, super cowardly. He's just kind of, like... I mean, Ar- see, my thing is Arthur I mean, is nothing without Merlin. Like, he needs he yeah, needs Merlin. Yeah, I agree. And Simba has claws and fangs, like, sharp teeth. And went through watching his father die because of him and came back out the other side of it. Yeah, yeah and he's pretty he's badass strong. in that final fight, so... Yeah, Simba. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next, we have Raya versus Merida. We all know I don't like Merida. And this is one, Caroline, I think you'll enjoy Raya because Raya could kick Merida's ass. Oh, I would love like, to see that. Go, Raya, go. And for those who are like, well, Merida's a brilliant archer and could like pick off Raya yards away. Sure. Yeah, she also has anger management issues. I mean, Raya has some, a lot of anger too, very justified anger. But she's also got this sick mm. ass sword that can cover a large amount of mm. distance as well because it's like retractable and like it's pretty yeah. it's pretty awesome. Raya. Mm-hmm. Yeah, baby. <gasps> now it's Hercules versus Prince Philip. Now Prince Philip It's Hercules. Yeah, it's Hercules. Prince Philip gives a good showing, like good yes, for him. But again, but he's nothing Hercules. without the fairies. <laughs> Hercules is a demigod. Oh, and he has a good heart. Oh yeah. gosh, please don't even get me started. I love him. Yeah, Hercules. Jasmine versus Ariel. Jasmine's tough, but she's it's Ariel for me. Oh. See, I think it's Jasmine. I think Ariel causes more problems than she's worth. True, but I think when it comes to going head to head with the villain, I mean like Ariel's up against giant Ursula. And like sure, it's really Prince Eric's ship that ends up destroying her, but Ariel's like this small compared to Ursula, and she's still giving it a fight. Like she's going. Is for she, it. or is she just like dodging zaps? I, I feel like Ariel is a bit bolder than Jasmine. I don't know because Jasmine, like, she sees. She thinks she is, but does she really know? Like, no she she gets caught taking the apple, and she doesn't know what the hell to do. Yeah, but I also she think freezes. About ja- I also think about Jasmine when she's in. And she's with Jafar and she sees Aladdin sneaking in and she knows exactly mm-hmm. what she needs she to distracts. do in that moment yeah, yeah. To, to like help him where like Ariel, she causes the problem and also is not really instrumental in fixing the problem because like King But Triton I think her ta- causing the problem is because she's a risk taker. She's bold. So yeah, sometimes that comes with problems. I like Jasmine. I completely get where she's coming from. In the animated movie, I think she's a bit of a complainer. Okay. If Ariel has the ability to go back and forth between being a mer person and human, I'll give it to Ariel because that is an advantage that Jasmine does not have. So I'll say Ariel. Jasmine does not own the carpet either. So she's not working with any magic. True. True. Now we have Pocahontas. Versus Elizabeth Swan from Pirates of the Caribbean. Elizabeth Swan does end up being like a pirate lord. Yeah, yeah. By the end of the series. Mm -hmm. She can hold herself in a fight. Yeah. Can captain a ship. Mm -hmm. Pocahontas, maybe this doesn't have as much to do with this, but she knows the land. She's extremely resourceful. Yeah, she's intuitive. Willing to die for the cause. Willing to die for the cause. Also, like, her aerial diving skills are pretty dope. Yeah. She's good at, you know, She's very athletic. I will say that. She's 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 a fast runner. 
She's much more athletic than Elizabeth Swan is. I would like to think that Pocahontas could hold her own in a fight as well. We never see her fight, yeah. but yeah. I feel like she would but know I think what given she's the chance. Doing. Yeah. I want to give it to Pocahontas. Yeah, I think I do too. All right. And finally, Elsa <laughs> versus Princess Mia. Well, is, now that we're framing it this way, it's Elsa. This is this is no Sorry, fair. Sorry, Mia. Like, love you, girl. Elsa has literal ice powers. Mia, yeah, you yeah, can't no. even get your Mustang that, up That's the hill. my bad. I think I created that matchup. That you did. Just silly. You okay. did. And I left that one because I knew I wanted this pleasurable moment. Fine. So now we are moving into our homegrown heroes. So our first matchup, this is a rough one. Mm. Mulan versus Esmeralda. Mulan can fight. I mean, Esmeralda can too, but not in the same trained way. I know. Mulan saved She's China. trained. Yeah. All right. It's Mulan. This is making up for when I did not award the Pua to Mulan. I gave it to Esmeralda. So now yeah, Mulan can have her for revenge. For this moment. Yeah. Okay. Here's This is the one that I'm not looking forward no! to at all. No. Belle versus Tiana. <laughs> oh. <sighs> I mean, we don't see either of them fight. No. Tiana has the moment where she's confronted by Dr. Facilier. And tempted, and she's able to hold her own, Mm -hmm. which is like, that's something to be said, to be like, okay, this villain might try and offer you some shit, and you're able to be like, no, I I know what my job is. Because, you know, she's offered another chance to, like, get married to Gaston, save her father, and she's like, I'm going to bet on myself and, and bet that I can find a way out of this and not have to marry this guy. Yeah, she's pretty resourceful. She escapes... From many different situations. She escapes from the Beast Castle. She escapes from being held captive by Gaston. She does pick up that stick and start whacking those wolves. Yep, that too. So she's like ready to fight. She does need help. The Beast does need to come save her. He does. But that's, I think, also because she's like overrun by like a couple Mm. wolves. Mm -hmm. I think I'd give it to Belle because I feel like she would, she had no problems picking up that stick and just going for it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Where I feel like Tiana is much more intellectual in her approach and I feel like mm-hmm. might hesitate to pick up the stick. Mm-hmm. And in that hesitation, it might be just too much. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Robin Hood versus Aladdin. So mm. two scrappy street rat types. Yeah. Um, Aladdin's very athletic. He's cunning. This is kind of like his way. Well, no, it's both of their ways of life. Never mind. Yeah. He's, he's got the magic magic on his side. He does have magic. Robin Hood is a good fighter. He's a good archer. He's good at climbing. He's a bit smaller of a guy, though. He is. If you took away the archery, how would he fare? I don't know. I think Aladdin, I don't think we can count on him having the genie. Because otherwise, I feel like I'd put the genie in there. Okay. So I think it's just like Aladdin based on his skills. And I feel like his skill is sleight of hand and running away. All right. So you're thinking Robin and, Hood. And maybe coming up with like a smart plan. But I feel like Robin Hood could come up with just as smart of a plan. I think Robin Hood might take this. Okay. I can do that. All right. Next up, we've got Judy Hops versus Pacha. It's Judy for me. No, oh, I'm team Pacha. Oh, no. Judy works 10 times harder than Pacha has to work. Like, she is physically fit. She is trained. Like, she knows how to deal in a whole vast array of elements. Like, I guess for me, sometimes I feel like she's trying to prove herself so much, where Pacha's just like, I'm trying to survive here, so I'm going to do whatever I need to do to survive. And I think that can make you a little bit more ruthless sometimes. I feel like Judy, the journey of Zootopia is her getting past that. Yeah. So if we're talking about the Judy hops that we have at the end of the movie... I think we'll get a Judy Hopps, much like her acing her police officer test. I think of her in the boxing ring, like using an opponent who's much larger than her, like using their own weight against him, where I feel like Pacha would just go in like big arms swinging and like get launched off a cliff. All right. All right. I do appreciate your argument for Pacha. But I just think he's Judy just so has straightforward, it. and I feel like that's a huge advantage sometimes. But I'll give it to you. All right. Next, we have Quasimodo versus Bracket Ralph. Well, you know, listen. Two big guys. Yeah. Like Ralph could probably smash things 
way more easily, but I don't know. Quasimodo. I, yeah, I think Quasimodo too, because he's a bit more coordinated. Like, yeah. when I think of him swinging down and from he's Notre got, Dame he's there Cathedral, a little bit more there intellectually as well. Like, yeah, but I mean, I just think of like if Wreck It Ralph had to do that rope swing to pick up Esmeralda and carry her back up to the top of the tower, I feel like he'd miss. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I yeah. just do. Yeah. I love him, but I think he'd miss. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we know Quasimodo don't miss. Mm. He don't miss, and he don't mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hiro Hamada and Milo Thatch. Mm. I mean, Hiro is an inventor, so I feel very confident that he could invent something awesome to take control. However, we also know that his inventions were being used by a bad guy Mm -hmm. unintentionally, and he didn't foresee that. I think Milo is a little naive, though. He is naive. And sometimes naivete is okay in, like, a David and Goliath sort of way. But, yeah. It's Hero for me. I think Hero. I think Hero. Yep. All right. Next up, we have Peter Pan versus Tarzan. Peter Pan can fly. He's a good sword fighter with a knife. Yeah. Tarzan, I mean, he's very agile. He can swing. Strong, too. He's really strong. And he, like, you know, killed a jaguar. But I think being able to fly, though, huge advantage. Being able to fly is pretty great. Yeah. I think I'm going to give it to Flight here and Peter Pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our final uh, pairing that we have, I kind of cheated with this one. I like this. Two pairs because they're kind of inseparable. Mm -hmm. So I have Bianca and Bernard from The Rescuers. And I have Pongo and Perdita from 101 Dalmatians. Bianca and Bernard. Yeah, I will say Pongo and Purdy, they're pretty ruthless in what they will do for their children. Like I think about both of them in Hell Hall, like threatening Horace and Jasper. But I do have to say, like, Bianca and Bernard. They're tiny and they just go for it. They're tiny and they do some amazing things and they saved a human. Yeah. And I think actually being tiny could be an advantage. Yeah. All right. Bianca and Bernard. Mm. All right. All right. Let's head over to Villain Land, shall we? I love Villain Land. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're going to start with some everyday assholes. So our first matchup is between (laughs) Mother Gothel. And Prince Hans. I mean. And Connor has already told us why Prince Hans sucks as a villain. Mother Gothel. And Mother Gothel is pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Ruthless. Yeah. I think Prince Hans in general deserves better than you give him, but I agree. Okay. I give him nothing. (laughs) Now we have Gaston versus Shan Yu. Obviously Shan Yu. Yeah, obviously. I mean... Gaston, when it comes down to it, he's an effing coward. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's he like, please don't hurt me. Yeah, no, bye. Shan Yu has to literally get exploded by fireworks. Yeah. If and we're he talking basically assholes, gets though, his objective. Yeah. If we're talking assholes, it's Gaston. But, like, he, yeah. No. Yeah. Shan Yu also, like, has no problem, like, decimating a village to the ground, mm-hmm. and, even if children are there. Yep. Now, Captain Hook versus Governor Radcliffe. It's the Battle of the Fops. Yeah. I think Captain Hook is much better at so the too. actual fighting. Governor Radcliffe makes everybody else do the dirty work. He's pampered. I agree. He's a big baby. No. Now, hmm, Cruella DeVille versus Madame Medusa. I actually have an opinion on this one. Okay. And I feel pretty strongly about it. I think it's Madame Medusa because at the end of the day, for the same reason as Captain Hook and Governor Radcliffe, Cruella DeVille has other people doing the dirty mm, work for her. True. Madame Medusa originally does, but then she's like, I'm coming down there. Cruella kind of does that, too, in hunting for the puppies. But, like, Madame Medusa, she's ready to double-cross everyone. She pulls out a gun, and, like, she's prepared to kill a child Mm -hmm. for a diamond. Madame Medusa scared me more as a child, too. She really scared me. Yeah. I mean, both of their driving skills are horrendous. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right, Madame Medusa. Okay. Professor Radigan versus Sheer Khan. Hmm. I know we you've made an entire case for Radigan. I have. Sheer Khan is pretty He's just violence. He's just straight violence. But I mean, Professor Radigan. After what you said in our episode, I'll give you it. He thinks so many steps ahead. 
Yeah. And Shere okay. Khan gets kind of tricked by a flaming log getting tied he around his tail. does get tricked. Okay. Okay. My boy. Radican. Mm. Next is Lady Tremaine versus the Queen of Hearts. And the Queen of Hearts is kind of insane. So therefore harder to beat a little. Yeah, she is harder to beat. But I will also say Lady Tremaine is another ruthless person Mm -hmm. who isn't afraid of taking matters into her own hands. Yeah. Where Queen of Hearts Hearts is like, off with their heads, off with their heads. And and sort of like giving my way. Where like Lady Tremaine's like, I know exactly what's going on and I'm going to lock this girl in her room. But in a fight, sometimes I feel like the sheer force of the Queen of Hearts would be terrifying. She would scare. If I was in the arena with her, I'd be scared. Hmm. She's wild. Yeah. I feel like Lady Tremaine, I could also just be like, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. I love your dress. You're amazing. And she would, like, calm down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Queen of Hearts would be a pretty – She's. I think she's a risk, but a worthy risk because you don't know what would happen with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could turn on a dime, which yeah, may play to exactly. her advantage in that the hero wouldn't really be able to plan for her. Yep, yep. But at the same time, we can't necessarily count on her. So she's a risk, but – We'll take that risk. All right. Now we have Clayton from Tarzan versus Commander Rourke from Atlantis. Yeah. I mean, one plans to commit a genocide of gorillas Mm -hmm. and one plans to commit a genocide of people. Mm -hmm. Now, remind me about Commander Rourke because, like, Clayton also, like, take the shotgun in his hands. Goes after Tarzan, too. It's just, like, got the crazy eyes going on. Oh, yeah. Would Commander Rourke do the same thing? Yeah. Commander Rourke goes after Milo, and he gets sliced. Milo slices him with that, like, piece of the crystal, and then he becomes uh, crystallized and, like, yeah. scary and violent and then gets chopped into a million pieces. Yeah. So Commander Rourke is pretty scary. I mean, like, I just, for me, uh, he's kind of haunting in how effing real he is Mm -hmm. also just like when milo's like everyone here will die and he's like i don't really care just how heartless he gets yeah all right it's different for me i'm more familiar with clayton so it's it's i don't know i don't know i think what sticks in my mind with atlantis is like when people sort of raise the situation to commander work where they were like we didn't think that there would actually be people down here. Like the situation sort of changed and he's like, nothing has changed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think commander work for me, that's kind of like, okay, he's, he's willing to just like full on kill a lot of people. Okay. All right. And finally, at the end of our everyday assholes, judge Frollo versus Scar. Frollo, baby. He works on his own. He doesn't have any hyenas backing him up. He's pure evil. He is pure evil. Yeah. But and he will trick he? you into thinking that you are the one who's wrong. And he'll like mess with your head. <laughs> I mean, Scar will do That's that too. True. Don't get me wrong. Scar will also do that. Scar but, has claws. Scar will fight, but also he'll fight. But then he also gets scared of Simba. Yeah. Like he's kind of fronting like he's not, but he's scared. Uh, you don't see Frollo get scared ever. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Frollo is not scared. No. Nope. Okay. Mm. Yep. Okay. All right, so on to our monsters and magicians. First off, we've got two dragon-transforming ladies. We've got Maleficent and Queen Nerissa. Mm. It's Maleficent. It's Maleficent. She's the mistress of evil. She cursed a baby. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because she didn't get invited to a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Next up, we've got two representatives of the undead. We have Mm. the Headless Horseman from Legend of Sleepy Hollow with Ichabod Crane. And Captain Barbosa. I'm going to go Barbosa on this one. <sighs> I mean, I think he's I could... a little bit more battle wise. I mean, I know the Headless Horseman was a soldier as well, but. Yeah, he was a Hessian. And also, like, could he be in a similar situation as Queen of Hearts where we don't yeah. know what he's going to do? Yeah. And his undeadness is a little bit yeah, more. Where, Cap- where Barbosa's his immortality was conditional and then he sort of got played. Mm hmm. Um, where are you? What are you thinking? I'm thinking Barbosa. I think he's scrappier. He is. And you know, the headless horseman can't talk to you. And Barbosa is also he can pretty laugh. good. He can, but 
But Barbosa is also pretty good at getting in people's heads, too, and convincing That's them true. to do things. All right. Yeah. It's not going to win against Maleficent. I was just thinking. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Dr. Facilier versus Yzma. Oh, it's it stinks. It's Dr. It's... Facilier, but Yzma is... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yzma, keep, she, she relies on Kronk and keeps fucking up every two seconds. Oh, see, I was I was leaning Yzma because, like... Oh, I love her, but I, if I had to pick someone to battle for me... Lab. Yeah, but, like, she makes so many mistakes. True. And she gets so disgruntled by it, too. Like... Yeah, yeah. Dr. Okay. Facilier is smooth. Okay. Dr. Facilier. I love Yzma. She is my favorite. Okay. Next up, we've got two demons. Mm. Chernabog, mm. who is the big gargoyle thing from Night on Bald Mountain in Fantasia, and Tekka from Moana. Tekka is scary as all F. Mm. Makes nature die. That's pretty powerful. Also, like, on fire and, like, crawls And huge really, and really scary. Fast. Yeah, like, terrifying. Chernabog is also huge and terrifying. Yeah. I think I might lean more towards Chernabog here. Oh, because okay. Tekka is really Tefiti. Right. And can, yeah, okay. Yep, I'm, I'm with it. Not to downplay what Moana did at all because no, she no. literally stood Oh, I would have crapped to... myself. <laughs> it would have been uh, a wrap yeah. for me. There would have been a pile of poop. <laughs> okay, next we have the Evil Queen versus Hades. Yee. Hades. Hades has more magic, I think, available to him in a moment's notice, whereas the Evil Queen... Has to plot and she has to make a potion and shit like she's that. She's got to, yeah, depend on the potion. She's got to depend on the huntsman. Hades is also a good talker. Like, again, gets into yeah. people's heads. Yeah. I think mm. I'll go Hades here. Yeah, I agree. I'm sorry, evil queen. Yeah. I do like she's you. She's pissed now. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have Oogie Boogie versus Madam Mim. <laughs> I think she, Oogie Boogie for sheer power. Like, yes, but also, like, if you pull a thread, he becomes a pile of bugs, and then he's done. <laughs> Madame Mim can transform herself into literally anything. Oh. She's okay, also yeah, scrap it, actually crazy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think no, Madame I Mim actually else. stands a chance against Oogie Boogie. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. She, I, like I think it. she'd be like, oh, you're a pile of bugs? I'm going to be a gigantic chicken and eat yeah, you. Yeah, and eat you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, true, true. All right, next up we have Ursula versus King Candy slash Turbo. Because he's kind of a monster. Yeah. Because he's like digital and then at the mm, end he becomes the, definitely. the bug. And yeah. I mean, Ursula. Ursula. I, yeah. Ursula. Like, For so many yeah. different reasons. We'll get into it once she has to, you know, fight some other villains. And then last in this section, we've got Jafar versus the Horned King. Both have magic available to them. Mm -hmm. The Horn King uses that magic to create a literal army of the undead. Yeah. Um, he's also effing terrifying to look at. Yeah, he is. And I feel like would make any hero shit their pants a little bit. Yeah, I'll go with the Horn King. Jafar, however, very cunning. His magic is very interesting. But also it's tied to the if snake he was scepter. Yeah, if he was that powerful, he wouldn't need the lamp. And I think he lets his own anger get the best of him. He gets frustrated and then he's screwed. Yeah. Okay. Horn King. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Making our way back to the royalty, nobility, and the gentry. Round two. Okay. Anna versus Moana. I think Moana. It's Moana. Yeah. It's Moana. Yeah. She she's, has a yeah. lot more skills. Yeah, that's that's all it comes down to, really. Yeah, they're both very brave. Good for them. Yeah, Moana also did face off with a scary, evil, like fire demon mm -hmm. god, like face so. to face. Yeah, yeah. And Tamatoa, mm -hmm. and had to deal with Maui and all of his bullshit. Yeah. Hmm. Simba versus Raya. You're gonna say Raya, but I just I don't know. I don't, I have a very I strong say. opinion. You think it's Raya? I think it's Raya. Okay. Raya is. Without a doubt, the most incredible fighter I have ever seen in a Disney oh. movie. Okay. Say no more. Now it's Hercules versus Ariel. Well, it's Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> it's Hercules. Ariel, I love you, girl. I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> and again, this is another one that's a little unfair. It's Pocahontas versus Elsa. 
Elsa has ice powers. She does. It's Elsa. I'm sorry, Pocahontas. I know. I feel bad. All right. All right. So moving on to our homegrown heroes. Mulan versus Belle. I love you, Belle. Mulan Mulan's got fight. the skills. All right. Okay. Next up, we've got Robin Hood versus Judy Hopps. I might go Robin Hood on this one. I think I might go Robin Hood as well. Yeah. I I think he's just like, he can think on his feet really, yeah, really quickly. Yeah, he's a bit of a trickster. Judy yeah. does get a little flustered sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next up we've got Quasimodo versus Hiro Hamada. Hmm. I might go Quasi. I would go Quasi as well. Yeah. Don't sleep on him. And really he don't. Can really Do go not. for it. Yeah, no. I think Hiro, his ego mm-hmm. is a thing that Quasi yeah. does not have. Quasi doesn't have that and, at all. <laughs> he doesn't have it at all. And... I think that's a real advantage, to be yeah. completely honest. Yeah, I agree. And then we've got Peter Pan versus Bianca and Bernard. Ooh, versus, ugh, it's tough. But I think against a villain, it might be Peter Pan. Again, the sword fighting, so the flying. I think yeah. so. I think that's right. All right, round two over in our villains. Okay. Hmm, tough. Mother Gothel versus Shan Yu. Hmm. I mean, this really comes down to. This is like physical versus intellectual in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And Mother Gothel is dependent on Rapunzel's power. And Shan Yu doesn't depend on anyone like that. Yes. He's a leader of an army. He does depend on his army. Mm, But I think if he was fighting alone, alone, he'd be fine. I think so, too. I think it might be Shan Yu. Yeah, I kind of agree. I think Mother Gothel would hold her own in a battle with him. But not enough. Yeah. <laughs> she might convince him to fight for her <laughs> yeah. and then double cross him later and stab him in the back. Or it could take one stabby stab from him into her and she's done. So <laughs> True. <laughs> Ooh, I would love to see this next one. <laughs> this would be interesting. Captain Hook versus Madam Medusa. I mean, Captain Hook is a swordsman. He also... Has a blade on his arm. They're both a little wacky, man. They're both wacky. They're both wacky. I, but I also feel like if Madame Medusa was like coming at him, I feel like he would be like, what the F? In a way, I agree with you. Let's take a chance. But also, he's a good swordsman and he has a he has a pretty big ass sword. But he also has a, you know, deathly fear of that crocodile. Oh, that's true. All right. Madame Medusa made it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Professor Radigan. Versus the Queen of Hearts. Another interesting matchup. I think you're going to say Radigan because of like intellectually. And she's just like sheer so. lunacy. Yeah. Okay. That's let's, where, that's where I'm it. leaning. Yeah. And maybe I'm biased, but I don't care. It's my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> and finally, Commander Rourke versus Judge Frollo. One wants to commit genocide of all of the Romani people, mm-hmm. and one wants to commit genocide of all the Atlanteans. I, I think it's Frollo still. I think it's Frollo he's, as well. He's going to convince someone more. He's going to get into their head. Yeah. He was ready to kill Quasi. Yeah. And Esmeralda burned Paris down for one person. He's he's insane. <sighs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in our uh, Monsters and Magicians, we have Maleficent versus Captain Barbosa. Okay, Maleficent can turn into an effing dragon. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Next up, we have Dr. Facilier versus Chernabog. Chernabog is literally the friend on the other side. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like Chernabog would like all right. whoop Dr. Facilier's sorry okay. little ass. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, next up, we have Hades versus Madame Mim. And, you know, while I love Madame Mim and her ability to transform into anything, I think Hades has similar powers. And I do enjoy the fact that he's a better talker. Yeah, me too. So I think he has to take that one. Mm-hmm. And then next up, we have Ursula versus the Horned King. Ursula can get huge. Yeah, <laughs> Ursula Ur- Ursula gets... I, I think I would give it to Ursula yeah, here. Yeah, and she's got the intellect... The charm. All She's that. got the intellect. She, yeah, she is willing to operate in a whole lot of different modes as mm-hmm. opposed to I am evil, hear me roar. Yeah, yep, I agree. She literally stole her man's. <laughs> oh, yeah, she did. Damn. Awesome. <laughs> she really did that. 
All right. Woo, these are going to be wild. Okay, back to the royalty, nobility, gentry. Next round. The ultimate smackdown, Moana versus Raya. Ooh. Now, see, I don't know. I watched Moana look the enemy in the face directly. I don't know if Raya does that. I'm sure she does something like that, but I don't know. Moana facing Taka is pretty unbeatable. I think for me, it has to come down to skills here. Um, I think I will give it to Moana as well. Okay. Yeah. I do she has love the connection to the water. Raya a lot. I think Raya can sometimes also get a little blinded and like she puts her blinders up and it gets mm-hmm. fixated on one thing okay. in a way where Moana, I think, considers more of the whole, which yeah, yeah. will be important for fighting a villain. Mm-hmm. And now Hercules versus Elsa. Oh, God. Now, I think. Hmm. Both are willing to die for something. Elsa's powers are connected to her emotions, which could be an advantage or disadvantage, depending on how you look at it. She's definitely mastered her powers. Mm -hmm. She's also connected to the other elements who can come in for support. Hercules literally can fight literal death. Like he went to death and came back. This is a real tough one for me. I know. I know. Because they... I feel like they're both very evenly matched. I agree. He has a lot of brute strength. She has magic. They both have had moments where they've doubted themselves. They've both had moments where they've looked death in the eye or like confronted death as a possibility. I mean, Hercules had some training, which could be an advantage. Elsa's self-talk. Yes. And actually, oh, you know what they both have in common too is... At the end, they're both like, I don't want to take on the leadership that this is calling me to. Like, I want to be regular, regular me. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I will say Elsa is a full-on elemental spirit. Yeah. I think I may give it to Elsa. Who do you think is more willing to destroy when needed? I think it might be Hercules. That's the only thing that's swaying me. Oh, yeah. We see him, like, destroy the Hydra. Then he destroys Hades in another way that's not just like, you know, brute strength. It's it's motivated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If it's we're going hard. to destroy. Yeah. Okay. Hercules, you can have this one. <laughs> You're so mad. Poor Elsa. All right. Now on our homegrown heroes, we have Mulan versus Robin Hood. It's Mulan. She saved China. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we've also got Quasimodo versus Peter Pan. Hmm. Uh, it, it stinks. I think the magic puts Peter Pan over a little bit. And and Quasimodo's gut instinct is gentleness. That's true. All right. Okay, here we go with the assholes. Shan Yu versus Madame Medusa. I mean Shan Yu. Shan Yu, yeah. <laughs> He's got that big curvy sword. Oh, yeah. And Professor Radigan versus Judge Frollo. Oh, no. Yeah, that's hard. They have a lot in common. They do. I think, and you know, I'm going to say this, but I think Professor Radigan might have it on Judge Frollo because I think he would read Judge Frollo real easily and play him. I think Radigan might get tripped up by his own showmanship, though. Like, he loves the showy aspect of it. And Judge Frollo is just like, destroy, destroy, destroy. Mm. Yeah, I guess Judge Frollo would probably, like, exterminate all of Paris in order to get rid of Radigan. Yeah, yeah, it's true. But I also feel like he would exterminate all of Paris, but still not manage to get Radigan. Radigan would outsmart him. Okay. He'd, like, figure out a way to become immune to the gas. Yeah, but then, that's true, but then he would want to get in one last wave as he runs away from Paris, and then, like, Judge Frollo would just step on him. Because he'd want Radigan would have this instinct to be like, haha, I won. And that's what's going to trip him up. Or would Radigan put a contraption in the hellfire <laughs> sequence to like burn the whole house down or slit his throat with his claws when Frollo's sleeping? I mean, who knows? I don't know. You know? It's hard. I'm trying to think who would I want to fight for me if I needed him. I don't know. I might go Frollo. He just has no, he's like soulless. I feel like Radding has got a little bit of a soul left inside of him. I am so 
sorry. I know. I know you love him. These are like our two favorite villains. So it's really hard. I, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. I think Radigan. I think he can. Hold he's still on. a rat, though. He's a rat. <laughs> He's a rat. But, like, maybe that's what's best. Like, maybe that's what no one will see it coming. They'll all underestimate him. Yeah, but we've really only seen him go up against, you know, creatures of his own size. I'm not saying he's not intelligent. He is. But, you know. I will, Okay, fine. I will concede only, only on the fact that we have not seen him tested against humans. Fair. Doesn't mean I don't think that he could do it. No, I never said but that. But I don't yeah. want to send someone untested into battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maleficent versus Chernabog. I mean, ooh. I mean, one is a demon. Maleficent has the intelligence factor. She does. And in the Kingdom Keepers novels... She basically controls Chernabog. Oh, I could totally see that happening. Yeah. Maleficent. And then Hades versus Ursula. This is a matchup. Yeah. Does Ursula need the trident? I never thought of that until now. She does need the trident to enhance her powers. Mm -hmm. She can cast magical spells already. On her own. Hades They're both cannot. exiles. Yeah, they are. They're both like smart talkers. They've both got a sense of humor, which is disarming. Hades is king of the underworld, though. He like controls death, but not exactly. She relies on Flotsam and Jetsam, who are competent. He relies on Pain and Panic, who are not. Mm-hmm. So there is some questionable judgment there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he tries to control um, Titans. Yeah, he tries to control the Titans and isn't exactly successful with that either. I think I might give it to Ursula because when all's said and done, she's like, I'll fucking do it myself. Yeah, I'll give her Which it. is yeah. something that I admire yeah. about Maleficent because that she's also like, I'm just going to do this myself. I'm yeah, just going to yeah, become the dragon. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Here we go. So now to figure out who the contestant <laughs> is from royalty, nobility, and the gentry. Moana versus Hercules. I kind of want to give it to Moana just to fuck Hercules over. Who would win between the two of them? I mean, well, if we're going the route of, like, who will kill. I don't know. Maybe Hercules I mean, would be like, I don't want to hurt this young woman. Do you think Moana would And Moana is used to, like, matching up against, like, these beefy dudes and telling them what to do. But it's just, I don't know. It's Hercules pretty much dying and coming back to life that really <laughs> makes me think he could face almost anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess we have to give it to Hercules because I've never seen... Moana kill anybody. Yeah. And we might need some killing happening. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that, but... I know, I know. Yeah. All right. For our homegrown heroes, final matchup, Mulan versus Peter Pan. It's Mulan. Yeah, yeah. Peter Pan's childishness will get in the way. Like, yeah, yeah. she would easily figure out and see the solution to get Peter grounded so that she could kill him. Mm-hmm. And he's also a child. He's a child. All righty. All right. Villains. Finally, Shan Yu versus Judge Frollo. I guess it's Shan Yu. Strange. Yeah, yeah I think it's Shan Yu. Because, like, if, yeah, if, if I'm thinking about, like, Hercules in there with Judge Frollo, I'm like, Frollo's toast. Yeah. Like, also, if my villain doesn't get to make it, yours doesn't either. <laughs> Petty bitch. <laughs> Petty bitch. <laughs> All right, and then final matchup for Monsters and Magicians, Maleficent versus Ursula. Mm. I think it's Maleficent. Yeah, she's I would the agree. Mistress of all evil. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. She's just like, yeah. Toosh. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Ooh. Royalty and nobility and gentry. Their representative is Hercules. Homegrown heroes, represented by Mulan. On the villain side, the everyday asshole is Sean Yu, and the monster and magician is Maleficent. So, mm-hmm. basing off for the hero who will enter the final competition, Hercules versus Mulan. The only advantage for Hercules is he's a god. You know what? I can't explain it. I just see a higher likelihood of Mulan dying than Hercules. I don't know about that because I think if Hercules goes against Sean Yu... Fine. 
Mulan goes against Shan Yu. We know she works out okay. Mm. Hercules goes against Maleficent. Oh. I think Maleficent could play him. I feel that. Could she play Mulan by being like, I have your father. I have your family. But I think she would not count on Mulan to think as creatively as she does. All right, put a Mulan forward. Go ahead. I think Mulan is our hero. All right. For our villain, we've got Maleficent versus Shan Yu. I think Maleficent. Maleficent. She turns into a dragon. Yeah. Mulan versus Maleficent. Mulan versus Maleficent. Holy hell. Unfortunately, I just don't see any way that Maleficent doesn't win this. But how does having Prince Philip beat her? With the help of the fairies, I guess. Yeah. With the help of more magic, which Mulan does not have. Then why isn't Elsa in here? You eliminated the magic. (laughs) No, but no, no, no. Elsa is too good hearted. I mean, so is Mulan. Don't get me wrong. But she's got the fighter spirit. It's different. I just don't see Mulan winning this. I don't. Uh. Why are we setting up all these people without magic against the magic? <laughs> How does this, happen? this happen? This is why I kept trying to push for Hercules, because at least he's got a little something. Like, he's got a little something. But he doesn't have magic. I know, but he's got something that's not totally just plain old humanity. I don't know. Mulan destroyed an entire army with one rocket. I just could don't kill see it dragon? happening. I don't see it happening. I think Mulan could kill a dragon. Yeah, but Shen Yu is not as intelligent as Maleficent is. Like, Maleficent set out her whole plan to destroy everything, like, years down the line. Like, she's got plans. I don't, well, I don't think the Hercules would win against Maleficent. Maleficent would be like, yield, or I'm going to kill your family. So Mulan would be like, I yield. Or would she find another way? No, no. (laughs) Are we that podcast that is about to condemn Mulan to death? (laughs) I guess this puts us on the dark timeline. (laughs) Wait, this is how we're ending our first season. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Maleficent also has a thirst for power. She's also pretty egotistical. Yeah. Because she's like, you think you could defeat me, the mistress of all evil. And then, like, she rears back once as a dragon, and he chucks a sword in her heart, and she's toast. Right, I find. I could see I could see something like that happening with Mulan. It's chance. It's chance. But we'll say we're rooting for the timeline where she gets her chance to chuck the sword at the right moment. And I could see her doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um... But it literally, to me, it feels like it, the roll of a dice. Like, it, like if Mulan finds the right moment, I think she's capable of killing Maleficent. I do. Okay. So you'd say it's a one in six chance that Mulan kills Maleficent in the same way that it's probably a one in six chance that Prince Philip killed Maleficent. I'll say a two in six. Okay. Two in six chance that Mulan kills Maleficent. Uh-huh. So... I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a number generator thing. This is like D and D right six. now. Are we playing Dungeons yeah. and Dragons with Mulan and Maleficent? Oh my bit. god! Yeah. Roll for initiative. Woohoo! Okay. Number generator one to six. You pick the two numbers. Okay. For Mulan to win. Five and two. Five and two. If I roll a five or a two. Oh my god. Mulan wins. <laughs> if not, you're not gonna believe this. What? What was it? I rolled a five. Mulan (gasps) wins. Mulan figured it the F out. Wow, that's really exciting. Because what I did originally was I hit the number generator thing and it brought me to the page and a a two was already sitting there. And I was like, okay. And then I went back and I was like, does it always default to two? And then I came back to it and it was a five. Wow, so in both timelines she won. I mean, Both timelines she won. (laughs) Oh, wow. So... Wow. <laughs> Congratulations, Mulan. Wow. That was awesome. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Well, congratulations to our two champions of the mm. first Beluga Savruga brackets. Mm. Mulan for Heroes and Villains and the Beast Castle for our locale showdown. I feel so, good. I feel good. I feel good too. All right. This this <laughs> is this is good. This is some good shit. Sorry, Maleficent. You played a good game, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> Can't catch a break. Alrighty. So if you enjoyed what you heard, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe or follow wherever you're listening to the podcast. That way, all of our episodes get downloaded to your device as they come up so you never miss anything. 
And also those ratings and reviews, they really mean a lot to us. They help us reach other listeners, prospective audience members, and we read everything that you say, and it means the world to us. So please, on Apple Podcasts or any of the podcast apps that you listen on that allow you to rate and review, please, a five-star rating, a couple quick words, it would really mean a lot. Yeah. So... And please come be our friend on social media. We are at Unfortunate Pod on Twitter, and we are at Poor Unfortunate Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to make other friends besides us, you should join our private Facebook group, The Poor Unfortunate Fam, where we have a bunch of listeners in there talking about the episodes, sharing Disney tidbits, sharing opinions. It's beautiful. And one of just the most wonderful things that has come out of this first season. So if you are in the Poor Unfortunate fam, hello, we love you, and we can't wait for more. And then I'll just close out with what I always say. It does take us some money to keep this podcast up and running and coming to you. So if you find it in your hearts and in your wallets to send us a few dollars, we do have a PayPal account. It is in the episode description, and it's also on any of our website links and our social media accounts. Um, You can make a one-time donation. You can make a monthly donation. It could be $1, $5, $10. Anything all goes right back into the podcast and helps us so, so much. So thank you very much for considering that. And yeah, you know, I just want to take a quick moment right before we end and just thank everyone who has been a part of this first season of Poor Unfortunate Podcast. This started as an idea that Caroline and I had way, 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 way back Mm. and has evolved into what it is now and has kept us artistically sustained, Mm -hmm. especially during quarantine, during hard parts of our lives that we've had recently and being able to put this together for all of you who are listening and to know that there are people on the other end listening to us is really special and it's been such a privilege. Yeah, I just feel very humbled um, by the feedback that we get from all of you. Um, We didn't know when we started this, there was a chance that maybe just our friends would listen to it and we were happy enough with that. But the fact that we've met so many people through this who we do not know, who live in other parts of the country, other parts of the world, we're sending you so much love because we really feel it from you every week and I'm more grateful than I could ever say. And this is like, Yeah, this is a dream that we talked about for so long, and I didn't know if we would ever do it. And so I just want to say thank you, Connor, for being my buddy and my teammate, because like it never would have happened otherwise (laughs) if it was left up to me. There's no one else I would rather do this with. So, Mm. All right, folks, we will see you in season two, which will be coming at you very, very shortly. (laughs) And so until next time... Beluga Beluga Savruga. Savruga.